Did you get me? Nah, did you get me? Did you get me? You need to bite somebody? You need to bite somebody, yay. It's bite time. What's up everyone? Welcome to Lowered Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. I am currently in the middle of working on four different videos, but unfortunately none of those videos could be ready for this weekend unless I rushed them out and kind of did a half-ass job on them. And so I decided that they're just going to have to wait and instead of actually releasing the videos, I'm going to talk to you guys about what I'm actually working on. So we're going to start with this. One of my viewers named Adam, who works for XL Canada Lubricants, very generously sent me a couple of bottles of diesel treatment. This one is called XL Never Gel, and this one is XL Plus 7 Diesel Nitro Daily. This is, of course, anti-gelling stuff for diesel fuel to stop your fuel from gelling in cold weather. And the one that I am very interested in is the XL Plus 7 Diesel Nitro Daily which is a cetane booster and also a conditioner. Uh, basically, I'm going to add this stuff for a few different tests. One, I have a heater that runs a little bit rich and it makes a bit of carbon. And we are gonna see if this makes any difference. We're also going to add this to a heater that I'm burning vegetable oil in. More on that in just a little bit. And uh, we're gonna see if this does anything for a diesel heater. Of course, this product is not designed for a diesel heater. It is designed for a diesel engine, but we're going to test it out anyway and see what happens. I wasn't planning on talking about it in this video, but another viewer named Dave Lowe has actually built and has sent me a control system for my experimental heater. This control system will interrupt the signal between the ECU fuel pump signal and the fuel pump. It basically splits the signal into two and will not only allow me to control air fuel ratio, but will allow me to control fuel fuel ratio as well. Meaning that I will be able to inject diesel and then some other alternative fuel at a given percent or a percent at my choosing. He has also added a feature so that I will be able to start the heater and run it on pure diesel. So basically run it on one fuel pump for a specified amount of time, and then it will switch over to whatever percent I have chosen, so I can go 50-50 or 10-90 or whatever. So that is gonna be really cool. You can look forward to seeing that in the near future, hopefully. And I plan on running that on my new self-cleaning diesel heater. You will have to wait for the full length build video on this to actually see what's inside, but I will do my best to explain this quickly, which probably won't be very quick. If you've been following the series, you will know that I had a waste oil and air injection port in the top of the heater over here. That is no more. The chamber is actually now much more like your standard chamber. Uh, the one that I had previously had two separate chambers, one for burning diesel to preheat the second chamber, which burnt the engine oil, waste engine oil or ATF or whatever else you pumped into there. And so now this chamber is basically your standard chamber. That's what this line is for, to inject the diesel as you, as you would on a standard heater. The exception is that the baffle has been removed and now instead of the baffle, I have something that is shaped like this, like a dish. That sits in the chamber. This basically replaces the baffle. And there is a device attached to this, a rod basically, that is attached to that, that comes out through a bushing in the end of the heater. This rod, when it turns, turns this piece inside of the chamber and that is how it is what we'll call self-cleaning. You actually have to turn it. There's no motor hooked up to it, so I will very likely be using a drill. I will now demonstrate. The drill is now connected to the shaft and the shaft is connected to the dish inside of the heater. And when I pull the trigger on the drill, that is spinning the dish or the dish baffle inside of the chamber. 
While that might not seem like a big deal, I have redesigned the fuel and air injection nozzle so that it actually protrudes from the backside of the burn chamber. It sticks in quite a ways and it sits very close to the surface of the dish that is sitting in there that rotates around with the use of the drill. So basically the fuel injector air injector nozzle sits in here and this will be able to rotate around. So the fuel injector is actually going to double as a cleaning device. Now, the hope is to actually have this automated at some point in the future, maybe a servo motor that actually spins the piece once every 10 minutes or something like that. If it's automated, it can come on as frequently or infrequently as I choose or you choose. But for now, this is kind of a proof of concept just to see if it works at all because we don't want to spend a bunch of time and money on something that just isn't going to work. I have a pretty good feeling that it is, but there are some things about this that probably aren't going to work terribly well. One thing being that there is a bushing in the end of the heater. We're probably going to get some gases out of there, carbon monoxide, a little bit of stinky stuff, and maybe even some oily, nasty residue, depending on how well the heater is actually working. The chamber is probably going to work fairly well because it is based off of an original chamber design with a single chamber instead of two. So I have high hopes that this will actually uh, burn with decent heat and not make a lot of stink or carbon monoxide. I might try a couple of different things like mixing gasoline in with the waste oil or mixing a little bit of diesel in with the waste oil and trying to see how low a percent of diesel we can actually get away with because it would be really nice to cut the expense of running the heater way down instead of just settling on, well, 50% works. Speaking of the 50% works, we are now going to get away from this. Some of you are gonna be happy about this and some of you are gonna be pretty arrogant and rude about it. There are a lot of people who actually suggested this and then there were more people who demanded this. And I have actually been putting this test off for quite some time. I ended up buying the vegetable oil way back when I bought my paint thinner and Verisol. But then I had a few people who were a little bit rude about their suggesting this video and I decided to basically put it off for a while. I have had some people who have suggested that this has worked for them and I've quizzed them about it, talked to them about it in the comment section and it seemed pretty legit. However, I've also had a bunch of people who have told me stuff that I know is absolutely not true. So you have to understand when you suggest something to me in the comment section, I get a whole lot of nonsense suggestions so if I'm skeptical about something that you tell me and I ask you questions about it, that's because I get people telling me stuff that I absolutely know will not work. I get people suggesting that I do stuff that absolutely will not work and they've tell me, told me that they've tried it and that their results were fantastic and I know that they haven't tried it because I'm smart enough to figure out what would actually happen if they had done that. Now that that rant is over, what I'm actually working on is a 50% diesel, 40% vegetable oil, and 10% gas mix. And the results are pretty promising so far. I actually ran the heater test for 36 hours and then pulled the heater apart. I'm not going to suggest that you run out and do this, but I can tell you that after 36 hours, and four liters of uh, vegetable oil burnt. The results were good enough that I decided to run another four liters of vegetable oil through it. And so the heater is going to continue on for another 36 hours, minus the running that I've been doing on it today. This is probably the most exciting part for a lot of you. This is a completely stock, untouched, out of the box, brand new heater with zero modifications done to it. So these results are going to be what you would get with your heater, very likely if you perform this same test or decide to try to burn this same fuel. So let's take a look at the setup. I'll show you exactly what I have. 
So this is my setup. This is a very basic five kilowatt Viver diesel heater. You guys may have seen the video that I released on this recently. Uh, it's on sale for $119 Canadian until the end of March. $119 Canadian, which is basically less than every other currency. Like I said, very basic, very simple. It doesn't give you access to an engineering menu. It basically turns on, burns fuel, and makes heat. Everything that you would want from a heater, right? Apparently not some people. Anyway, very basic heater and it is completely stock. I have not touched it. The only thing that might be different from yours is that I have it laying on its side, which works perfectly fine. And that is just so that the exhaust can go out the window. It is hooked up to a vegetable oil uh, mixture tank, which feeds down into a valve. This is my, my diesel tank. So I've been starting it up on this and then switching over to the vegetable oil once it's warmed up. And again, I've been running this for about 36 hours, took it apart. You guys will be very interested to see the footage of that when the video comes out. I wouldn't suggest that you just run out and start burning vegetable oil in your heater just yet. The last experiment that I was gonna talk about is the modification that I did to my fan housing. I ended up using the Viva rotary flex shaft tool to port out or to hog out a giant chunk of the fan housing. Let's see, we've got a fan housing here so I can show you. I chopped off the intake pipe and basically just cut a hole through the housing itself so that it pulls in air directly from this area and just cut this pipe completely off. So what I was planning on doing is actually running a heater, not an Alpine mode so that it ran rich and then run it with that fan to see if there was a difference. And I highly suspect that there will be. The problem is currently that fan is installed on this heater. This heater is patiently waiting to be tested as soon as the vegetable oil test is completed, which should be sometime on Monday. So once that is completed, I am going to switch over to testing this. And I expect that this is going to be quite a long-term test. So the fan for this is going to be uh, in use and I won't actually be able to use it on my other heater. I'm sure I probably left something out or wasn't terribly clear about one of my experiments or designs. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know down in the comments section below. I promise the next video that you see will be an actual build or test or something like that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Due to space limitations, I've had to resort to a whole bunch of other modifications and I'm not even sure if these modifications will work, but basically where I'm at is the fan isn't rubbing without the fuel line on. I've had to reduce the brass piece down to this tiny little piece and I can't put the fuel line, I basically have to solder the fuel line into this fitting once it's in the heater because I can't thread it in afterwards. All right, let's try a piece of wood. Oh, that might have worked. <laughs> Oh, yeah.